Man, there's some big time recruits out there. Anthony Hill just decommitted from Texas A&M. We still got Bain and Okun Lola up for grabs. Who's coming to the U? You are locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Alex Dono, your host. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and contributor to allhurricanes.com. And thank you so much, even in these tough times, for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. You're, we're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. This episode of Locked on Canes is brought to you by Sling TV. Don't miss this week's matchup between the Miami Hurricanes and Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets right here on Sling. Sling, the TV you love for a price you love. Try it today. Yes, my friends, we are talking recruiting, and we're talking recruiting again because that's the one positive thing going on with the University of Miami right now, and that's why our pal John Garcia Jr., lead uh, head of football recruiting, I should say, from Sports Illustrated, joins us. John, I hope you're doing better than my Miami Hurricanes did on the field last week. Yeah, look, it's – it's um, what was the Jalen Hurts line a few years ago? You just flush it down the toilet and, and move forward. Uh, this is one where you don't – you don't need to watch the tape. Just just get back into the game plan. Get some pads on. Take it out on each other and practice and move and move forward. So, and or focus on recruiting. That's certainly one of the other avenues that that you can jump into. So, totally understandable. And, and look, it's year one, right? This is a, a long process, I guess. As Mario tried to tell us all along, although of right. course, you know, the fans didn't really uh, pay attention to that one. Or me. I feel like this is mostly my fault. By the way, every time John Garcia joins us, he's brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnCollege. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnCollege to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Let's start, John, with the biggest fish uh, out there right now. Top linebacker in the class of 2023, Anthony Hill. He decommits from what is a dumpster fire right now at Texas A&M. And I know Miami fans are like, but Dono, this is also a dumpster fire. But I'd rather be in a dumpster fire in year one of a new coaching regime versus year five of a coaching regime regime like Tam Yu is in right now. So Anthony Hill, John, one of the very best players in the entire country from Texas, but he's got family in South Florida. He does have South Florida roots as well. Does Miami have a shot here? A puncher's chance, if you will. And I think, you know, we, we've seen stranger things happen with Miami in this class of 2023. So having a puncher's chance for a top recruit feels better at Miami than it does at a lot of programs. As you mentioned, he's from Texas um, and, he, and he's, you know, he's staying regional in terms of his upcoming visits. But there's a lot of ties to South Florida, as you said. I mean, Miami offered him way back, I think, January of 2020 so previous coaching wow. staff he was already getting in it, in and out of coral gables uh as a as a prime and, and prioritized recruit as, as a very young prospect obviously the new coaching staff comes in reaffirms that scholarship offer and i know clark and his family spent a few days down south um in the spring right before he started to continue to narrow his list and he Miami was at the was, spring game i believe in Miami. yeah he was at the spring game too so you know multi-day visit there once again uh, miami was really kind of a dark horse for him for a majority of that recruiting process they were in his top group before he narrowed it to two where it was a&m and texas so naturally when he decommitted from texas a&m we all go, okay, well, Texas was the other finalist, and now he's going to visit there this weekend for TCU, college game days there. So now the momentum uh, rolls over to the Longhorns, uh, who are, are kind of red hot on the trail right now. But we do have confirmation thus far that Anthony Hill wants to take it all the way to signing day. So now the window is a little bit more open. You're not expecting this to be like a flip where he decommits – on a Monday or Tuesday, and then he he commits to Texas on Saturday while he's in Austin. We don't expect the timeline to be that narrow. So all the other schools in it, Miami, uh, Florida, USC, Oklahoma, Alabama, now all of a sudden you feel like you've got a little bit more of a chance because you got six weeks to potentially close and make an impression as opposed to just a couple of days. Uh, so in that regard, Absolutely. Miami's got a puncher's chance in this one. Linebacker is one of the positions where the class is building and there's certainly some promise there, but you you can't 
ignore the potential icing on the cake that would be an Anthony Hill, much like we talk about with Samson Okalola on the offensive line. I guess Cormani McLean in the secondary, although we weren't talking about it as much before that verbal commitment. When when there's an elite SI-99, no-brainer kind of recruit that's been that guy for two, three, four years in some cases, it's really hard to turn those away, even when you've built a great class at their projected position. And you're right, and Miami has three really good to great linebackers already verbally committed. Malik Bryant, Popo Aguirre, uh, sold on Aguirre, because even though he says it Aguirre, if I don't say Aguirre, people in South Florida get mad at me. So I want to say it. I want to pronounce it the proper way. Uh, And Bobby Washington as well. But still, Miami clearly wants to add more. And even if they only have a puncher's chance at Anthony Hill, Miami is still recruiting Stanquan Clark, John. He's a local guy. He was at the Miami-Florida State game. You know, for whatever that was worth. Uh, but I, I also hear talks of him maybe scheduling an official visit to Miami before it's all said and done. And that's despite being a Louisville commit. It seems like Miami is trying to flip this one. I kind of got the sense that they eased up on his recruitment before he committed to Louisville. And maybe now, because I, I guess he's having a pretty strong season, they've wanted to put their foot on the gas again. What's going on with Stanquan? Well, yeah, I remember at the time, right, Alex? I mean, the, the summer was was Miami's to, to win in recruiting. So it, it really, the class ballooned like crazy. I believe that was right after Malik Bryant committed, uh, which is when um, Clark started to narrow things down and all of a sudden, not rush into a commitment, but, you know, throw in a July commitment where uh, a lot of folks expected him to wait to a certain degree. And I do agree that at that point, while Miami was so hot and picking up other linebacker recruits, uh, Popo was in that uh, time frame as well, he kind of slipped through the cracks a little bit. But uh, transfers to Central, playing uh, alongside Ruben Bain, and and those two have wrecked shop for, for, for Central all season long. Big upset over IMG, and they really haven't looked back. They've had huge wins every single week, still undefeated uh, as things currently stand. So, yeah, big senior year for Stan Kwan, who's so versatile, right? He can rush the passer, he can cover – uh, he can play sideline to sideline. So he brings you a little bit more three down ability than some of the linebackers Miami currently has on board. And he's very big, too. It's not like he's undersized uh, to compensate for that skill set. He's actually uh, more old school, 6'1", 6'2", 220 pounds or so. Uh, so naturally, Miami back in this race in a big way. Charlie Strong among those uh, involved in this recruitment. And yeah, he's been on campus a bunch of times but not for officials. Uh, and I think that's where the key is, as you mentioned. Uh, it appears as if Miami is holstering some of these official visits for local recruits. We just haven't seen a lot of them pull the trigger with an official, whether it's Brandon Ennis, Stan Quan Clark, even, even the guys who are uncommitted. We haven't seen a lot of local officials during the season. So it appears in kind of conventional Mario Cristobal fashion that Miami's gearing up towards a late official visit window or weekend closer to the holiday uh, at the end of this month or maybe even early December right before uh, the early signing period opens up. Uh, Later the better in this case uh, for for a lot of programs including Miami in terms of that official visit because you are selling something that is not so easily seen to these recruits so you want to hammer those points home as much as you can as close uh, to National Signing Day as possible. But three visits is, is, is a big number uh, for unofficials, even though it's the local school, even though, you know, Ruben Baines probably, you know, giving him a ride every single time, still <laughs> a big deal for Miami in this this flip attempt. Uh, I know he's he's publicly doubled down on Louisville here over the last week or so. Um, but again, it's recruiting, man. Stranger things have happened. I don't think Miami lets off the gas in this race. If you got a puncher's chance for Anthony Hill, you got a much more realistic chance for Stan Quan Clark because it does appear as if Miami is the prime contender if he were to move on from the Cardinals. Well, we have a ton of names we still need to talk about here with John Garcia. One of those he hinted at, I got to get his take on Ruben Bain, what the latest might be there. We got to talk about Samson Okunlola, the pancake honcho who was visiting Miami this past weekend. Nicholas Harbor is going to make his final official visit to Miami in December. That would be a gigantic get for this staff. So, folks, keep it locked right here to Locked on Canes. Hey, did you know that over the holidays, property crimes like burglaries and package thefts spike nationally? That's why our friends at Simply Safe Home Security are offering 50% off their award winning security system so that more families can feel safe and secure this holiday season. Order your Simply Safe system for half off today and enjoy advanced security and greater peace of mind this holiday season. 
folks, what I love most about Simply Safe, why I feel so comfortable with the protection of my home, is their advanced technology. Well, controlling my own system from my smartphone. I watch those HD feeds of my security cameras inside and outside my house. Like, I don't know, man, I feel like I'm living in the 22nd century or something. It's really, really cool. There's so many high tech sensors around your house. It's amazing. Simply Safe was named the best home security system of 2022. That's this year by U.S. News and World Report for a third year in a row. Folks, in an emergency, 24-7 professional monitoring agents use Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify that the threat is real so you can get priority police response. Do not miss your chance to save big on the only security system that I recommend. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash Locked on college. This is their biggest discount of the year. So do not wait. Simplysafe.com slash locked on college. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. Joined by the head of football recruiting for Sports Illustrated, John Garcia Jr. Uh, John, I don't know if it was uh, 100% confirmed, at least not from what I saw, but I, I did hear that uh, Ruben Bain was expected to be at the Miami-Florida State game. I assume he was there. Uh, you know, you talked about him a little bit. He's one of he's one of the best available players out there, like one of the best non-committed players out there. And he's a Miami legacy Uh Defensive end stud out of Miami Central. What's the latest on his recruitment? Miami's still the team to beat. Um, I know he was commenting on the atmosphere at, at Hard Rock uh, it being sold out. At least the pregame atmosphere or early early game atmosphere was something that uh, I think his, his direct quote was uh, something that was needed. Uh, so I, I think for a lot of programs, you know, selling out your stadium doesn't move the needle from a recruiting perspective. But when Miami's playing against this perception of apathy and lack of fan support, when it is sold out, especially with how the season has gone to this point, I do think it is a nice reassurance for the program, for the prospects that are hearing probably some negative things from other programs, especially under Mario Cristobal. His, his dynamic ability as a recruiter creates – kind of more enemies, right? It creates more eye rolls when Miami is brought up, which is when Miami's at its best, coincidentally. Yeah. Um, so I do think that was a big deal, not only for Bain, but for a lot of those prospects, um, particularly the local ones, because they hear it the most. They've seen it the most. They perhaps experienced a, a, a half-empty stadium the most compared to these other recruits. So I think reversing some of that, even in one a one-game sample, it is a pretty big deal. So Bain commenting on that, I think, is very much in line with that perception. But otherwise, look, as familiar with Miami as any recruit, committed uh, included, right? Any committed mm -hmm. recruit uh, to the U right now, I think Bain has been on campus more than you have. Uh, and has been, <laughs> probably. Uh, right. He's just, he's just the most familiar recruit. We're probably 20-plus visits in at this point uh, in terms of him and Coral Gable. So nothing left to learn on that front. And I think ditto – for this, uh, this coaching staff, obviously he was a priority for the last staff as well, understands kind of the business aspect of it. So this has always felt like Miami's race to lose. But beyond that, it's it just feels like there's a lot of fluctuation because he has been steadfast in waiting until signing day to wrap up uh, this part of the, of this, the decision-making process. And there's been ebb and flow with the programs beyond Miami. Auburn has had buzz. Alabama has had buzz. Louisville with his teammate Stan Quan Clark – has held buzz Oklahoma at one point. So uh, it really is a matter of do you do you start to lock in a decision time frame and who could legitimately challenge Miami uh, at this stage? I, I think Auburn's potential head coaching hire could be a little bit of a wrinkle in, in this race as well. But in terms of from the Miami perspective, I think the Canes are doing just about everything right. He knows he's a priority. Everybody's on this case at, at different points from Cristobal down to off-field staffers like Jason Taylor, everybody, it's all hands on deck for Ruben Bain. He knows he's a big deal for this class, and he's still the most important, you know, must-get recruit in my mind among those that are uncommitted at this time. Yeah, no question. Uh, another recruit I wanted to ask you about, because we got the news, I think it was late last week, uh, you know, he's got his five finalists set, he's got his final three official visits set, 
and that is stud five-star athlete out of the Washington, D.C. area, Maryland, I believe, to be specific. Well, at least Maryland's one of the schools he consider he's considering. Nicholas Harbor, who is – he's an athletic freak, John. I mean, he's six yeah. foot five, projects out probably as a defensive end. That's where he projects best. Uh, but he's got borderline Olympic speed in the 100 meter. Like, he's an absolute freak. Um, and I like the fact that something we always talk about, right? You want to have either the first or the last official visit – and his Miami official visit that's been scheduled for December 16th will be the last one he is scheduled to take. So where do you think Miami stands with Nicholas Harbor? This is a fascinating one because, like you said, the officials are starting to, to wrap up, at least in the planning phase. But there's there's no plan to sign in the early period yeah. for Harbor. So now you get that last official and then six weeks later – He's signing a letter of intent the first Wednesday in February. So this race is going to be unique and talked about into the new year because Harbor is isn't as well traveled. And, um, you know, he's he's got more to consider than just about every other recruit. Right. He's an elite on the football field, elite in the track, academically elite as well. Uh, so he's considering more than than your conventional recruit. Uh, and that's made his recruitment wide open. As you said, um, Miami's right now scheduled to get that final official visit LSU USC Maryland USC East I should say South Carolina yeah. USC yeah. West is trying to get the last official that one seems like it's the one that is potentially flexible so as time goes forward here does another school try to poach that last visit that, that hasn't been named as one of the finalists for Harbor I think that will be fascinating and it could come down to Cristobal versus Lincoln Riley uh, which will be fascinating in and of itself but in terms of Harbor he's just a different recruit and he's considering things differently but Miami's always been in this thing at one point in the offseason he said Miami's been recruiting him the hardest and the most consistent program in it uh, with him um, but he hadn't been to campus so I think that's really the, the last box to check uh, from his standpoint um, and again considering he's one of the very few 2023 prospects we know of today that's going to sign in February, I think that is advantageous for Miami because you theoretically yeah. wrap up signing day the second week of December, and then it's like Harbor and, and maybe one or two other guys that you're really focused on. And obviously, as this cycle has taught us, when Miami latches on to a recruit and it's a full-court press, they can create you know upsets of the century in, in the Cormani McLean context or – uh, just surprises or, or narrow wins overall, whether you look at Francis Maui Goa, Jaden Rashada, Jaden Wayne, some of the other high profile recruits that weren't considered Miami locks going into it. Miami's still able to go toe to toe with the big boys uh, across the country and Harbor would be uh, another one of those. I don't know how you would rank them in terms of the biggest wins in this class. But if Harbor was to sign with Miami, it would be, you know, there wouldn't be many prospects listed ahead of him in terms of the wow department from Miami's angle. So they're still in it and they're still after him. So it's a good sign. Fair. Uh, we're joined here by John Garcia, Jr., head of football recruiting for Sports Illustrated. You know, a player Miami has been trending for for several months. The pancake honcho, Samson Okunlola. Um, now, we've talked about how he's not very well traveled because his high school team, you know, plays games on Saturdays. He's not been out to a lot of games, but he did uh, make it down to South Florida this past weekend for an unofficial visit. Uh, you know, Miami has been considered the favorite for Okun Lola, who's a five star offensive tackle. And if he were to come in this class, I think it would line up so perfectly because Maui Goa can play right tackle. Uh, Okun Lola can play left tackle. It would just be a coup of offensive line recruiting. Uh, do you still consider Miami to be in the lead for Samson? I was a little skeptical before last week, right? Because our perception that Miami was uh, in front was kind of dated, right? It was yeah. it was based on the, the off-season visits where he took the official to Miami at the end of June. And really from that point, it felt like, hey, Miami's race to lose. The sooner he commits, the better for the Hurricanes. And then here we are in November, still uncommitted. So you just wonder, I know Ohio State wants to bring him in. We know Oregon wants to bring him in. We know Alabama wants to bring him in. Penn State, Florida. How, how can Miami survive these impending visits elsewhere? And then on Saturday, he shows up in Coral Gables. So I'm like, wait, hold, hold on a minute. So now Miami's gotten, you know, nearly consecutive visits out of the pancake honcho. So I was surprised to see him do that unofficially, meaning it was on his own dime. I think that reconfirms uh, that true interest uh, in the Hurricanes that, that he has seemingly 
always had. And I think this reemphasizes that perception that, yeah, Miami's still in, in the driver's seat for this thing. I, I do think there could be a long way to go. There's still at least two official visits he could take elsewhere uh, since he's already taken that Miami official. So again, if he shows up at Ohio State or Bama or Oregon in particular, it's definitely something to worry about from the Miami perspective. But I think taking the trip down from Massachusetts to Coral Gables or Miami Gardens for an unofficial, I think that does say a ton for Okanola's interest. I did not expect that going into uh, this Florida State game. Uh, so I think that shows a ton of interest from Okanola's perspective. And I do think today Miami's back in that driver's seat. So the question becomes, can he get these last two officials in wherever they're going to be before the early signing period? Or does this recruitment become one that potentially stretches to February? If I had to guess, I would say no. Too much of a big deal, too much of a priority for these schools, and and he's starting to get that traction uh, with these visits being set uh, that I think he'll be able to wrap it up uh, come December, and I think that would be very good news for the Canes. And when we come back, i got to talk about what seems like a glaring hole right now. You know, Miami's got 20 verbal commits, but no running backs, right? So we got to get some running backs, right? So we're going to talk about that and more because Miami has actually offered two new players at the running back position and they're trying to flip a, a pretty high-profile one out there. So we'll talk about that and more with John Garcia Jr. here on Locked on Canes. Folks, got to talk about Built Bar. Let's take a pause here for a second. Okay, we're paused. Great, because you got to try this. I'm talking about Built's, Built Bar's new reimagined flavors. These are so good. I just had a cookie dough topper right before I started recording. That's why I have so much energy today. The cookie dough topper the coconut brownie bar, and the coconut brownie topper, white chocolate peppermint granola. It's Built's take on the granola bar, so it's more filling and still insanely tasty. And candy cane brownie puff. Built puffs are like biting into the universe's most delicious food. First off, for anyone who hasn't tried Built bars before, they're literally the best tasting protein bars ever built. Get it? They're revolutionizing nutrition as we know it with 100% real chocolate, 17 grams of protein, and shockingly low sugar and calories. Just 130 calories, guys. I can eat these guilt-free. Just sink your teeth into that first bite, and it's going to change your life forever. And I'm not kidding. There will be a time before you try these new built flavors and the magical, wonderful time afterwards. You're probably wondering which new flavors is my favorite. An unanswerable question to say the least. I like a lot of them. They're all unbelievable, and they're all different, so you can order a mixed box and try all five flavors for yourself. Built, you've got to try this. Get 15% off your order right now by using our promo code LOCKEDON15. That's 15% off with the code LOCKEDON15 at Built.com. Thank you so much for making Locked On Canes your first listen. Now for your next listen, check out Locked On Sports Today, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, so, John, M Miami's got to be trying to get some running backs, right? I mean, l l let's start with uh, Mark Fletcher. He's an Ohio State commit. You know, he he and Brandon Innes were both at the Miami versus Florida State game. You know, they they both publicly they said nice things afterwards. I know on on Twitter, like Innes was kind of you know poking fun, like, hey, the pregame was great, right? Which uh, I think we all felt the same way. Um, you know, I, I guess maybe I feel a little bit more confident about Miami's chances to flip uh, to flip Fletcher than Innes, given how big of a need there is at running back. So, what's going on there with running back? Yeah, he's certainly, you know, the the local target to keep an eye on. I think him and Chris Johnson from Dillard are really the two. And, and there's, you know, there's clear paths towards winning those recruitments, but they involve other schools that are doing much better on the field. I mean, there's really yeah. no other way to put it. So for Fletcher, obviously committed to Ohio State, that's the hurdle to clear. For Johnson, it's it felt like Miami and Ole Miss for a long time. Ole Miss is running the rock even better than Ohio State is at this stage. So I think that will be interesting to see play out here going forward but for Fletcher Miami's always kind of been at the heartstrings it feels like uh he keeps taking the trips uh this was an unofficial I, I did see that maybe there's talks of an official so if, if he takes that trip uh, towards um the end of November or early December in that window it appears like Miami's building towards a big official visit weekend here at the 11th hour if he's one of those guys who jumps in and my gosh how easy would it be for him to to set that up uh, yeah. as soon as he makes that decision he could just get in the car so it's a different type of, of feel going into that kind of official visit 
Um, if if that is set up, I do think there's some serious consideration for the Canes. They clearly want uh, to bring in two types of backs, right? Fletcher, big physical downhill, although he's got some outside ability as well. And then Johnson, smaller, shiftier, faster type of prospect. So Miami's, you know, that's really the only miss thus far from a position standpoint. Now that cornerback is has gone from a weakness to the, one of the biggest strengths over the last two weeks. Running back is really the glaring hole on that commitment list, and, and those two Broward County backs uh, will factor into that thing before it's all said and done. But, of course, they're after some uh, some new backs as well. Yeah, and so I, I look at offers Miami sent out, and I, I kind of wonder, when I saw these updates, I wonder, is this like safety nets? Like, you know, obviously you have to have a plan B, right? If you can't get Johnson and if you, you know, if you can't flip – Fletcher, you do have to have other offers out there. And then one player I know you know quite a bit about is uh, he's a recent um, Kentucky decommit, Khalifa Keith out of Birmingham, Alabama. Miami has offered him. Uh, you know, how, how's the landscape now looking? Can, can Miami be considered a favorite or among the favorites here? Yeah, I think they've they've got an opportunity there. Uh, Keith has has had these rumors of a Kentucky decommitment swirling. It feels like the entire season, right? Uh, and by the way, big physical back, built much more like Mark Fletcher, uh, 6'1", 215 pounds or so. Um, Kentucky got him on board early, a really nice grab for Mark Stoops, but programs have not slowed down in their pursuit of him, particularly Miami. And then half of the SEC, mm. it feels like, has, has started to come after him. There was even some Auburn traction before they moved on from Brian Harson, So that one's uh, interesting to consider, considering he's a Birmingham uh, area recruit. Uh, Miami's had some success in Birmingham, both the previous staff and the current staff. You know, Inez Cooper was was a late grab uh, from that area uh, at the end of the 2022 cycle. Uh, so now I think Keith could be a potential target uh, in that regard. It appears as, as of this morning, I mean, the offer just came in last night, as of this morning, it does appear as if Keith is going to take his time. I think he's going to take more visits to other programs. South Carolina could get involved here and be one to keep an eye on as well. So really simple from the Miami angle. When's the visit going to go down? Uh, he's been to Florida State. He's been down in the Sunshine State previously before he kind of hit his apex uh, as a recruit. So can Miami get him down for a visit? He does have four official visits allotted at this point. Kentucky's the only one that's gotten him on campus officially. So the thoughts of him recommitting to Kentucky feel like a pretty big long shot at this point. And that's why other schools are starting to jump in and extend some offers. So look, if Miami gets him on campus, it's game on. And he's one that I would expect to explore a lot of these options. It's not a one-to-one -one where you're like, he's decommitting and he's going to commit to school X. It doesn't feel that way for Keith, at least at this point. And, and last one real quick, uh, I, I don't want to spend too much time on this one because it seems like he's pretty solid uh, to Michigan, but Cole Cabana out of uh, out of Dexter, Michigan, he's another running back that Miami has uh, has offered. So, you know, you, you have to and again, I feel like they're they're sending out more offers now because this is a desperate position of need. Yeah, and he's another smaller, faster type, right? 10-5 in the 100-meter dash, uh, much more, you know, under 200 pounds, built more like Chris Johnson than, than the Mark Fletchers or Khalifa Keys. So clearly there's a desire for Miami to get a little thunder and lightning type back combination, if possible, at the end of, of this 2023 cycle. But yeah, kid from the state of Michigan who plays running back, committed to Michigan with what they're doing at that position right now with Blake Corman and the development under Mike Hart, probably going to be tough uh, and uphill to overcome. Uh, but look, Josh Gaddis has a ton of experience recruiting up that way. And, and that system obviously was really successful up at Michigan just last year. So it, it's worth a shot at this point if Miami is offering. So probably more in the puncher's chance uh, a status in that regard. But again, a kid who's a little bit more close to the vest and seemingly solid, not very public and outward with the even the, the, the posting of the scholarship offer. So those kids are very businesslike, and, and we'll see if Miami can, same thing, get him on campus and, and see if they can really try to flip him. Well, excellent stuff as always here. He's John Garcia Jr. Follow him on Twitter at John Garcia underscore Jr. Check out his work in Sports Illustrated. Does an awesome job covering recruiting. John, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your week. Likewise, my friend. Thanks for having me. It's our pleasure. Guys, we're going to talk to you again tomorrow. Another episode of Locked on Canes. We are part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day.